about Newport's particular uh, you know, uh, problem with this is that uh, New Spectra has been exploring the possibility of placing a portion of this pipeline through our northeast quadrant. And they've advised us on several occasions that they're considering other locations in lieu of the northeast quadrant. We're seeking a definitive assurance from Spectra, at least with respect to this portion of the pipeline, and from FERC, that they've abandoned this ill-conceived idea and will not consider it any further coming through the northern Newport's northeast quadrant. We want this done now so that as we go through the scoping process, we can be uh, uh, positioned in a way so that this cannot be backtracked later on by Spectra or by FERC. As you've learned by now about the Newport project, it's a major redevelopment project that, that represents an investment over the last 25 years of $3 billion in private capital. We built 4,700 apartments, a 1.2 million square foot mall, 5 million square feet of office space, 600 hotel rooms, and the longest segment of the Hudson River waterfront walkway, 1.2 miles, and numerous, numerous amenities. We've transformed a once degraded waterfront into an internationally acclaimed example of urban rejuvenation and environmental cleanup. Now you've heard from a lot of the people uh, who have invested their, their businesses and put their homes in, uh, in Newport, and they put a real face on some of those issues. 20,000 people work at Newport, 12,000 people live there. We generate 1% of New Jersey's gross state product and 20% of Jer Jersey City's municipal taxes. And we're not even finished. There's another 2,200 apartments and 12 mid and high rise residential buildings to be built in the Northeast Quadrant. And I want to just digress from my written uh, remarks for a moment. Many of you received this brochure in the mail. It was a bulk mailing by Spectra in the last, well, earlier this week. And I think it misrepresents or certainly misleads in many ways what benefits, quote unquote, there would be from this project. They quote uh, some statistics from a report done by them by the Edward J. Blaustein School of Public Policy of, of Rutgers. What was it happened to report? Has its very own Blaustein report, which was done in 2006, which talks about the economic impacts of Newport to date and the future impacts. So we're talking apples to apples because it's the same people that wrote this. So this brochure says, that uh, the pipeline construction will create 2,277 job years. Well, this report says that the construction of the Northeast Quadrant over the next 15 years will produce 18,000 construction jobs and 5,000 jobs. The brochure also states that the pipeline will increase Jersey City's gross domestic product by $198 million in the first six years. This blasting report says that Newport's 23,000 aforementioned temporary and permanent jobs will generate $1.4 billion of income and $2.1 billion of gross state product over the next 15 years. And that's because Newport and the other developments like it that are represented by it and the small businesses throughout Jersey City represent real economic development for Jersey City and real jobs and lasting value that go to the residents of Jersey City and are returned back, into, back to the community. The pipeline's claimed benefits for New Jersey are a drop in the bucket as it passes through to New York City where the reduction in utility bills referred to here will occur. They won't occur here because this is not where the gas is going. In fact, the pipeline can do real damage to future economic development in Jersey City, and I will tell you it's already doing damage. We are in the marketplace every day. We don't get to sit and wait back until this project is decided. We're out there all talking to office tenants. There is a 14% vacancy rate in Jersey City's office market right now, and all of us who own these office buildings are out there trying to attract tenants. We work daily with the city, with people like Dan Froworth and Bob Cotter and Mayor Healy's staff, to talk to people as to why they should bring their businesses into Jersey City. And now we have this spectra of a pipeline to explain to everybody because now it's all over the press. Now they're all worried and excited about this. So what we had before, which was a critical advantage for Jersey City, is we had new infrastructure built in the last 25 years that was reliable. We had a transportation infrastructure that had been reinvested in by the state and the federal government in the form of the light rail, which made this the most efficient transportation system in the region. And now all that has got a big question mark on it. 
In addition to that, people who have invested in their homes here invested with the idea that there would be growth in the equity of their homes, the famous American dream of owning a home. Now they all have to wonder whether or not that is going to be threatened by the prospect of something that represents a risk that will, that will reduce their property values now and in the future. So in closing, I just want to say that uh, we're talking about you know, a, a real experience of 25 years of developing in this city. city. We've seen it grow from the derelict waterfront that it was when we arrived here. We've seen this Jersey City community come together but both in its, its older neighborhoods and in its newer neighborhoods to form a real community. It's a real wonderful place to be. It's a wonderful place to do business. And this pipeline does not belong here and it should not be allowed to go forward. And furthermore, this whole process, which I understand is, you know, is, is, is you're, you're following what you're supposed to do by law, but you also have discretion. And this type of presentation of the route, at, which is so indeterminate, all these questions that are on the table that are indeterminate are a real problem right now. And this process ought to be stopped right now. They ought to be sent back to the drawing board to really and truly examine alternate routes instead of the alternate route that's in the, their resource report, which is up Washington Boulevard. That's the route they rejected. So I think they ought to think about going up the Hudson River and before you would move this process any further. Thank you.